You will like this video if you have any mind for manifestation. Recently, I've been reading Dr. Joe Dispenza. His work taught me something truly interesting. Neville Goddard and Dr. Joe Dispenza both support changing one's inner world. Their main goal is to change the identity that is currently responsible for all of our troubles and failures. While Neville Goddard speaks more on the law of assumption and feeling the state of having a desire fulfilled, Dr. Joe Dispenza focuses more on frequency, heart coherence, and other related themes. But before some of the comments go off on a frenzy about how there isn't any frequency or something, let me just say that after watching and listening to both of these teachers, I found that everything comes down to one thing and one thing only, your state of being. You will value Dr. Joe Dispenza's work if you suffer from a disease because it mostly concentrates on health issues. You can overcome your ailments with the aid of his concepts in this area. Both of them, as I've already mentioned, are focused on changing the state of being, which makes them both very significant. You can achieve any desire you have by changing your inner world, and I'll show you how to do it. It will be labor-intensive, but the effort will be beneficial. I'm aware that many of you desire for various things in life, such as a significant other, a lot of money, a bigger house, or fame. However, because your existing identity does not feel them as true, these things could appear far away or even unreachable to you. What exactly is identity? Every one of us has mentally repeated a thought into an assumption, identifying themselves with anything or a certain set of presumptions. Once this assumption was proven to be true by the evidence, it became our conviction. We created beliefs about ourselves that we were weak, unlovable, or failures in certain areas, while imagining ourselves to be the strongest, most powerful, and most lucky in other areas, similar to how diverse beliefs combine to make an identity. These identities further influenced how we acted, felt, thought, and produced specific outcomes. Although many individuals have told me that I can manifest money, I wouldn't be interested in manifesting a marriage. My partner ghosts me after listening to it because I'm unlucky in relationships. I am aware that they are stating the truth. But is it true for everybody else? People who have a history of several relationships and whose ex-partner still harbors feelings for them exist. This only suggests that they are special in some way. They do, after all, go by other names. They don't experience having bad luck with love. How do you think people came to think that this was true? However, they did manage to gather reliable evidence. How did they manage this? Unknowingly, they may have tested the luck and popularity assumption in the past, which produced some favorable results for them. This belief in them developed as a result of their continued use of those results and subsequent cycles. This doesn't mean they are better or worse than you. It merely means they have linked themselves with it, and they now come across this on a daily experience. For instance, many of you in this room have said that you identify with the concept of a conscious manifester, and how successful you are with it will depend on your assumptions. You only need to change your identity. After that, activities and conduct will come more readily to you. With everything in your life, you have identified yourself. You must take on the persona of someone who has what you want. This can be done by feeling its existence in the present moment. You can see yourself in this identity in your imagination. Your imagination will be the tool that will help you with this. I understand that some people have trouble imagining, and I'll explain why. My observations are primarily explained by the fact that they are under the control of their bodies and minds via internal software. Your body and mind are both yours. Despite what some people may think, you are not your body or mind. You are in charge of using these things. Many of you mistakenly believe that your mind is who you are when in identity. You are not your mind. You are the one in control of these people's bodies and minds. You are consciousness and awareness. You used to act in a certain way and behave in a certain way. You can change this, and I'll show you how as your body is currently behaving in a particular way automatically. Simply take a seat in a position that seems comfortable to you every day in a serene environment. Try this out if you see yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media all day. 
Let's assume you check social media at midnight while lying in bed. When you do it, you'll notice that your body will start to remind you of various things and seek to persuade you that checking social media is necessary, but you must remain seated. Your body will begin to feel uneasy after a while since you are breaking its habit. Additionally, your mind will start providing excuses for you to check social media. They will suddenly remind you that you are wasting your time by being seated, and they will give you several reasons why you should get up and leave. Don't worry, you are changing something within yourself. You are developing consciousness by doing this. You break that tendency as you do it every day and become more conscious of who you actually are. Your mind and body are learning that they belong to them and that you are not your mind or body. You'll realize that throughout the day, you identify with many different things that appear in physical reality, even at this precise moment. Because you do this constantly, every time you identify with something, you develop your personality. So make sure to do this each day. If you tell your mind and body that I will only feel you to use the smartphone, eat the snack, and do those things when I tell you to, it will be amazingly simple to control your imagination and experience the feeling of having your wishes fulfilled. Your body and mind will learn to obey you instead of the other state around as a result of this when you arrive. Some people are unable to have their wishes come true because when they are powerless over this one thing, their bodies start controlling them instead of the other way around. What on earth makes you think that you can change the way you see yourself? Your body has a predetermined schedule. So if you're trying to force it to feel a specific body, it won't ever let you. It also finds the idea of abandoning that software terrifying. You can utilize the tool I've just given you to figure out who you truly are. Some people will comprehend it, while others won't. But don't worry if you can't understand it. This law allows you to fulfill any desire you may have. After watching this video, you're probably aware of the law, and some of you may even have found employment success. However, in some areas of your life, nothing seems to be changing. You feel trapped, and the situation doesn't appear to be changing any better. For whatever reason, these are reflections of your inner reality, and when it comes to manifesting your desires, the most important desire is to realize your inner reality. It's because your inner world, which is default for all of them, is a manifestation of every exterior aspect you experience, whether it be good, bad, or ugly. Your assumptions, beliefs, thought patterns, perceptions, emotions, ideas, and past experiences make up your inner world. All of these things fall under the category of imagination, and everything that happens to you inside is a result of your imagination. The ideas you are feeling, the pictures in your head, and the emotions you are experiencing are all imaginary. These fake acts result in your external experience and external situations. It may be clear by this point that your internal reality is a reflection of what is going on inside of you. Even after hearing a lot, you still decide to assign blame, blaming yourself as well as others while also internalizing criticism. Even though you are aware that holding onto these emotions is undesirable, you frequently do it. In any case, you complied with my requirements at the start of this video, and you are now watching it. If you approach whatever it is you're doing with the mindset of, I'll do it, then I'll wait for it to happen. You're doing it wrong. You are imagining it incorrectly if you picture yourself driving the car and then wait for it to actually happen in your external reality. Yes, you are doing improperly if you confirm that a certain person is speaking to you via text before affirming the message. When you are still awaiting money, it is untrue to claim to be wealthy. Although disturbing, it is also true. As Neville Goddard continuously urged you to do, picture yourself in the state of a wish that has been fulfilled, which signifies that whatever you desire has already happened. But many of you still behave in a negative manner. You think it will happen eventually if I employ this strategy. My little one, this is improper. To truly experience something at the time is the greatest way to imagine it. You experience certain emotions when you close your eyes and have the most passionate conversation with a certain person because when you imagine something from the perspective of experiencing it, it becomes real for you. 